Hi everyone, my name is Susan Sparks. I am the pastor of Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City, where I'm sitting. And this is Preaching in a Pandemic, What They Didn't Teach You in Seminary. This is a six week free e-course that I'm putting together based on basically what I've learned in the last month or two of being sheltered in place and putting together online services together, partnering with my congregation and with my minister of music and with our staff to figure out what works and what doesn't. And while I call it an e-course, I really like to think of it more as a conversation. So please feel free when I post these on social media, engage in conversation. Tell what you've learned, share with other people about what your experiences have been so we can all learn from each other together. So you're probably um, wondering why I'm sitting in a Christmas theme. <laughs> so here's the bottom line, I'm just being lazy. Yesterday I launched my third book, which I'm so excited about. It's called Miracle on 31st Street, shameless plug. Whoa, here it is. Anyway, it is a little collection of holiday meditations intended as evergreen inspiration. So you read a meditation each day, whatever part of the year it might be. You answer your journal questions in your free workbook. You go to your online advent calendar, find a surprise. So any time of the year you wanna set aside a block of time, it's 26 days, 24 for advent, one for Christmas, one for the day after Christmas. I guarantee if you're going through that for that period of time, you'll come at the world with a little more of a lens of joy, maybe even start to see miracles in everyday life. So when I was filming this yesterday, I did a live Facebook premiere and I decorated it for Christmas. And honestly, when I came in this morning to film this class, um, I'm scratching my eye, sorry, I just hurts. So there it is. Um, I, I just didn't have the energy to take it down. So what are you gonna do? Here it is. So we're gonna have a little Christmas today while we talk. Um, so these are recorded each week and they are housed on YouTube. So the introduction was last week, and then I had, I'll have five lessons. Today is lesson number one, two, three, four, five. They're all housed on YouTube, which you can access through my website, susansparks.com. And also they'll be posted on social media so you can see them. I wanna let you know about some resources that are out there. If you, again, if you go to my website, susansparks.com and go to eCourses, this is the first one listed. And when you go under this course, you'll see some links. One of the links says Pandem preaching in a pandemic resources, and it's a Google Doc. I have purposely made it so that anyone who accesses it can edit it. Now be nice, be respectful, don't put any weird stuff on there. But I thought since this is a conversation, if you have things to add, if you have links that you think are interesting, jump in, add them on there. I'll give you two that are on there right now that I think you'll find helpful. Um, number one is, I've turned it into a PDF, but it's an article by a dear friend of mine, Terry Scheinzeit, called How to Look Like a Million Bucks on Zoom. And it goes directly to what we'll talk about today in our lesson. Terry is a business consultant. She put this together for her clients and has graciously allowed us um, to use it for our course for free. So please feel free to go and access that. It has great links for specifics on camera and Zoom and accessories that I think you might find helpful. And also on that particular Google Doc um, is a link to Backstory Preaching. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, uh, this site. It is an online preaching class run by Reverend Lisa Crespin. And I took it, I bought it, I took it, and I found it to be great. She also puts out all kind of great free resources. And there is an article um, called basically Preaching Resources During a Pandemic that I found to be fantastic. So I grabbed it, the link is on that Google Doc. Check it out and go check out her site because the, I think yeah, there's some preaching, there's a lot of preaching online stuff out there. But they're not all great. Hers is really, really helpful and very strong. So check it out. So quick question before we jump in. <clears throat> How did your homework go last week? Mm -hmm. Did you do it? I hope so. If you missed us last week, the homework was to go back and watch your sermon from the day before. Hopefully everybody's videotaping their sermons. Watch the sermon two ways. One without sound, so you see how you physically present. And then the second time without image and listen to how you sound. You learn an awful lot. 
about yourself as a preacher when you see each one independently. So share with us what you found. And if you haven't done it, do it now. Take this week and do it and check it out and let us know what you find in doing that exercise. So today, our lesson today is called Lights, Sound, Camera, Action. Certainly not things that I've learned in seminary. I don't remember that class. If it was there, I forgot to take it. Um, and no offense to the seminaries, who would know that we would really need to know this kind of stuff as preachers, but hello, now we do. So I want to go through each of those categories fairly quickly, um, and then next week we're going to do uh, light, sound, camera, action. We're going to do action part two. So today we're going to hit each one of the four briefly. So let's start talking about lights, lighting. So important. I don't know if you've seen other services or watch people online trying to do Zoom or online presentations, you know, sometimes the lighting can be so bad it completely, you can't even watch it. I mean, I saw one this week that looked like the presenter was in the witness protection program. <laughs> I mean, they were completely dark. You couldn't even see their face. So the problem is this right here, this is the message. Your sermon is this. Everything about your face, a little bit about the body language, but this is what carries the message. It's all in your facial expression. It's in how you present yourself. It's in the way you emote, the way you feel, the intimacy, the honesty that you portray on screen. It's all right here. And if you're not lit well and people can't see that, you've got the power of the message. Okay? So just a couple of quick tips. Again, that article by my friend Terry has got great stuff on it, so check it out. But, you know, one time I tried to put myself with a window in the back. That completely washes things out. Not a good idea. Usually the light in front of you, coming in on you, is the best. I happen to have a light I bought on Amazon. Looks like a, let's see, can I get this thing down and show y'all? Yeah, I think I can. I got this thing. See this thing? I'm using that for this. Now see the difference? Okay, hold on a minute. No light. That's no light. And then let me put it back up there. Come back here. Do you see the difference? And also there's different, let me show you, you can do different, um, there's a little connector and I'll show you the different settings. You can go bright, bright. Don't like that. You can go kind of a darker, you can go that, or you can turn it completely off. You see how that shadow takes over? This is really important, really important. So let's play, where do we worry? That one, yeah. I think it maybe was 29 bucks or I don't know, 30, it, whatever it is, it's worth it. Get one, right? Really important. <clears throat> also, it's important to what you've got behind you to, in terms of reflecting the light. Um, sometimes people, um, you know, like I said, a window was a bad thing. Uh, a wall, a bookshelf is usually works pretty well. This congregation setting, this scene is tough because it diffuses the sound and it diffuses the light. It affects the actual um, high, high res of the picture, but my congregation loves it. It makes them feel like they're in church. So I've used this. Another way to do this setting um, would be to do, to record it on Zoom and incorporate one of the backgrounds that Zoom uses. You've probably heard about the virtual backgrounds you can use on Zoom. Maybe you've seen people do a presentation where they're like on a beach in the tropics or skiing or snow or... Virtual backgrounds are very easy to use. Terry talks about it in her article. You can also just Google it and figure it out. But one of the things I've considered doing is taking a snapshot of the church, either the outside or this internal snapshot and using it as a backdrop on Zoom. That's a possibility too. I just happen to like the feel of being in my own church and I live five feet next door, so there's no danger of me coming over here. Just for you to decide what's best and what works. Um, I mentioned bookshelves in your office, that works. They're good, um, although I did read an article today in the Times that talked about there's a, there's a Twitter account out there called Bookshelf Credibility, and because bookshelves have become so popular, like people broadcasting in their office, there's this whole kind of um, 
uh, undercurrent of folk now that are watching these, judging not the speaker not on what they're saying, but on the books that are on their shelves. <laughs> so be careful. Whatever you put back there, people are going to be looking at. All right? Um, so just be aware of that. So for lighting, very important. Make sure your face is clear and that people can see it and it's lit well. Sound. you got to have a good mic. Now, on this particular broadcast right now, I am using, um, I'm using uh, QuickTime. And the mic on this, this is a Mac notebook, is pretty good, but I bought a separate mic, and this is the one I'm using. It's called Blue, it's by a company called Blue, and it's called a Snowball. And literally, it just plugs into the USB cord in my computer. And I've got it sitting right by me over here, so it picks up the sound pretty well especially in a big room like this, that was 49 bucks. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna be broadcasting like this for a long time. We're in New York, and we're not going anywhere. So you amortize 49 bucks over the number of times you use it, you gotta do it. I mean, it's just important about how you get your message across. So lights, sound, how about camera? Again, I'm using QuickTime on my laptop right now, which I find works well for me. I like it, it's easy. It's just a pre-installed thing that the laptop came with. But a lot of people use Zoom. Some people are using Facebook Live. It's your choice. You know, you gotta choose what you do. Some people use their laptops. Some people use their iPads. Some people use their iPhones. The one thing I would say, just a heads up on what you use, if you choose your iPhone, Make sure you're recording in high res. And it's very easy to know if you're doing it or not. If you have an iPhone, literally just go to settings. Under settings, go to camera. Once you go to camera, pick video. And when you go to video, then it will show the different levels of video you can have. Make sure it is 1080, 1080, 1080 HD. That will give you some of the highest res when you use an iPhone. So simple, it's just in the settings. But you don't always catch that. People don't always know. One of the other things in terms of what the camera picks up is what we wear. Now, I know a lot of you are just gonna start rolling your eyes going, oh my God, here we go with a fashion lesson. No, I don't care what you wear, but I'm just telling you what reads well on camera. Um, I've had the experience over the many years of doing some television work and some interview stuff with you know people in all different aspects whether it's network or local or outdoors or indoors and you learn that there's some very specific rules of what what reads well on camera and you know checks and bright patterns don't always read well solids read best um, colors that are like vivid blues reds they read well, and especially, too, you got to match it to your background. You know, you don't want, for example, you don't want to wear a white turtleneck with a white wall in the background. <laughs> That's just sort of common sense. Unless you're preaching about, I don't know, like a blizzard, it just doesn't make any sense. So just be conscious of what you put on that presents on that camera. Now, what do you wear? I mean, some people, maybe you want to wear a robe. God bless. My choice has been not to on these online broadcasts because my choice is driven by the environment I'm trying to create. Here at Madison, this particular community of faith is one in which everyone is welcome and everyone um, is honored as a child of God. And so to, to show that, I'm um, actually trying to create a little bit more informal service something that when it goes way out into cyberspace with people we've never even met or know or they don't know us that the first thing they see is a little bit more casual welcoming face and environment for people who aren't used to church that's important but that's just my choice you may choose differently but just beware and be conscious of the environment you're choosing you know there is a certain thing as going too casual I don't know if you saw the guy on CNN who was <laughs> broadcasting with the suit jacket and pajamas, and he accidentally like like put the shot a little too low so the pajama bottoms showed, <laughs> or like it was shorts or something ridiculous. So just you know, beware of what you're wearing. Um, and then we talked about the background. You know, for we've got the Zoom backgrounds you can possibly look up. Background 
A sanctuary like this is great, uh, but if you've got people in it running around in the background, that's gonna distract. Whatever it is, make sure it highlights your message and points everything right here. So light, sound, camera, action. This is the first part of the action um, class that I wanna talk about. To, uh, next Monday, I'm gonna finish up the rest of action because there's a lot to talk about in this particular category. Today, I wanna to end our time by talking about eye contact. Honey, brothers and sisters, that is the ball game. That is the whole ball game on camera. I kid you not. It, when we're in a pulpit, we can get away with so much more. You know, mistakes, they're not so bad in a pulpit. Distance is forgiving. But this day and age, this camera stuff, there's no forgiveness. It's all right here. You see everything. I mean, like in the beginning of the broadcast, my eye was driving me crazy and I couldn't, I was like, all right, I just gotta stop and scratch my eye. I mean, it's not a big deal, but you're like, I really don't wanna do that on camera. There it is, you're right here. And you, you know, you gotta deal with things that are happening in the moment. When people see you on camera, it's almost like you're standing um, even closer than six feet, but you're standing in an intimate conversation. And think about when you're in a conversation, where do people look in a conversation? You look at each other. And if you're not looking at the camera, then all of a sudden the intimacy and the honesty gets gutted out of the presentation. So where are you looking when you present? A lot of people miss the fact that the camera is in a specific place. Like the camera is right there on a laptop. It's not down here, like I'm not, see where I'm going down here or over in this corner or in the middle, it's right there. That's your audience. You've gotta find the camera on the device, whether it's a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad. Don't look where the camera is not pointed because you're gonna look like you're off somewhere else. Have you ever, ever seen a preacher in a pulpit, for example, spot the corners of the sanctuary? It's the worst thing ever. It's like you make, like, you feel like you're not even there as a congregation member. Like, do they even know I'm sitting here? People looking at the corner of the room, or they looking, they're looking up, you know, they're looking around, they're not making eye contact with the sanctuary, or worst case scenario, they're just down at the notes the whole time, reading the notes. So when I'm down here, do you feel how the energy has just completely drained out of this presentation? as opposed to me talking directly to you. Do you see how important that is? You've got to keep the eye contact. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but I'm a manuscript preacher. Well, so am I. Guess what? I have a music stand right here with really big print in front of me. You just put the, drop the music stand right below so that they don't even see it. And here's what I do. I put my sermon in 20-point font. Yes, there's the confession, what can I say? It's 20 point font, and I put it at 1.5 spacing. So yeah, I mean, it's almost like, good morning. <laughs> I don't care. It keeps me up here. Because all I have to do is look down, and I have gone through and circled key words in that really big font. I catch the word, I know what it is, I come back, and I keep going. I also make the, um, I put the sermon into a little book. Now this may sound utterly nerdy to you, fine, it works for me, but I tape the pages together like a book so that literally, let's see if I can turn this around to show you. Here's my 20 point, see, see how this goes? And then I'll just turn the page, well this one, I'll turn the page like this, boom. And you can turn these pages and the camera never sees the pages turning. And I've taped it to the top part of this music stand, so it's up here that I don't have to look down to see. Does it make sense? So all I've done is make sure that it's printed in big font, I've made a little book, I've put it almost at eye level under the camera, and then I put delivery marks on it. Circle key words that are important that will catch my attention. If there's a place that I need to pause, I put a slash mark. If I need a long pause, double slash mark. 
if I need to just come to a full stop slash 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 whatever works for you but I have my delivery notes on the document so I know exactly where and what I'm doing in that presentation now some people like to use iPads awesome do it if that works for you that's great I don't use that because I can't put my delivery marks in it yeah you could probably highlight words you could probably type them in but I don't know I just like to be able to circle take a pen spend a few minutes with that manuscript before I give it going right through it and showing myself exactly what I want to do when I deliver it so that helps keep the main eye focus up here I also if I'm gonna tell a story I just put story don't write the story out just put story because that will force you to come up here and tell the story Stories need to be given with just, you know, a, a normal everyday tone. Just like you're talking to your friend over a, you know, a coffee or a drink. They have to have that personal touch. So I just put story. And in the end, you know, the bottom line is you're going to mess up. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to have to stop and scratch our eye like I had to do in the beginning of this sermon or scratch your nose like I'm doing right now. There's just stuff. That's, those aren't necessarily mistakes, but but we're human beings and there it is. The most important thing about that presentation or sermon is the beginning, the first few seconds of that beginning and the ending. Make sure that you've got something strong and we're gonna talk about this more later in the coming weeks, that you've got something strong in the beginning that you can make strong eye contact with. And then the end is something that you can lock eyes with the camera and close with. You don't need to be down here at the closing. Stay up here. One thing I've learned as a professional comedian, you might bomb your set in the beginning, but if you leave them with great material, that's what they're going to remember. It's all in what you leave them with. And I'll leave you with this today. Probably the most important thing you can do on camera, lights, lights, you know, lights, sound, uh, what is it? What did I just say? What was it? Light, sound, camera, action. Probably the most important thing you can do in all four of those is to offer a smile. Now, some of you may be thinking that sounds like the most ridiculous thing. That's so glib. That's so superficial. No, it's not. People are hungry for warmth, for joy, for comfort right now. And when they click that service on, when they click that sermon on, if the first thing they see is a scowl or a lack of eye contact or anything that blocks the intimacy, the honesty, the warmth, they're going to click it off. You start, you lead with a smile always. Even in the most difficult, hardcore sermons about tragedy or angst you lead with a smile and you end with a smile because in the end this is a message of joy and hope if you don't believe me hear it this way think about it this way the hospitality industry corporate america has picked up on this idea there's something called the 10-5 rule where for example disney ritz carlton and other large hospitality groups have taught their employees that when they are within 10 feet of a guest, they are to lock eye contact and smile. Why? Because they know that that can transform that person's experience. When they are within five feet of that guest, they are to speak to them and greet them. Why do they do this? Because they know they can preempt anybody's experience and change their view, change how they're experiencing that moment with a smile, eye contact, and a greeting, and it can lift people up, it can raise people's spirits, it can make them happy. Most of all, it makes them feel welcome and a part of what is happening. So those are my lessons today for lesson number one, which we have entitled Light, Sound, Camera, Action. I hope you'll join us next Monday where I'm going to talk about the second part of action, which is a very important piece, which is how do you avoid the cyborg syndrome of being a completely faceless, emotionless, frozen robot on screen. It happens way more than you might think. And there's a lot we have to talk about on that front. 
from not only delivery and practical side, but a psychological side too. So join me. Our homework this week, I want you to go back and watch your Sunday sermon from yesterday. Watch the video of it. And if you haven't done your homework last time, watch it without sound, then watch it without an image. And this week, what I want you to do is look at it from a lights, sound, camera, action perspective. What have you learned today that might have made that broadcast better? And maybe, most importantly, what could you do next time to raise your percentage of the time your eyes are on the text versus the time your eyes are on that camera? I hope you have a great week. Most of all, I hope you stay safe and well, and I wish you blessings in your journey, and I'll see you next Monday.